Blog Talk Radio. everybody appreciated that that wet cough that I just did because <laughs> I wasn't muted. <laughs> hey, welcome to episode 15 of Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast with Dave and Donna. I'm Dave, Mr. Coughity Cough, and joining us <laughs> is our co-host, Miss Sunshine and Rainbows, Donna. Hi, Donna. Uh, hi. <laughs> hey, it sounds like we've are, got... But- uh, uh, no, I'm doing fine. Are, I, just, I, I just had a cough. I, I, yeah, I heard it all over the desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to start. Excellent way to start. But, you know, sound, sound quality is sounding good this week. Knock on wood. So there far, yeah. So no far, way. so good, blog talk. Don't make us uh, come to you. Because we will, oh blog gosh. talk. We will. <laughs> we know we will. <laughs> yeah. So this episode of Night Thoughts is brought to you by Benjamin's Orangey Sky Soda. It's not always some other guy, except in the case of 14-year-old Davey. Oh, poor Dave. Poor Just give Dave. Me, give me a minute. <laughs> I'm a little verklempt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm better now. I'm good. I'm okay, good now. Good. I'm over it. <laughs> All right. Well, straight to the business, Donna. All you people wait, out wait, there. Wait, wait. My, what? Wait, 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 wait. What? Well, I was going to tell what? you. I, al- I almost wore my Orangey Sky Soda t-shirt for tonight's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> really? I, in fact, everybody, if you want an Orangey Sky t-shirt, you can get them on Tee Public. I have one. Do, do you know the it. address by heart by now? No. It's tpublic.com slash user oh, slash night thoughts. There you go. Yeah, I think I a couple my... people picked up the uh, Orangey Sky shirt. That turned out pretty good, huh? I love it, yeah. Yeah, Instead, awesome. Instead, though, I am wearing my uh, Kurt Gaber Benjamin Orr shirt in honor of tonight's yeah. podcast. I, I went with that instead. That reminds me. I've got to get mine out. You know, it is fall. It is colder than hell here in the Midwest. So it's time to get out the long sleeve shirts. And uh, I'm, I'm normally a guy who puts on like the uh, um, thermal under a short sleeve shirt. But you know, when you get some long sleeve shirts that are cool, like that one that Kurt made. Yeah. Got to yeah. wear that. Got to wear for that. Sure, puppy. For sure. Yes. Okay. You can go to the business now. Okay. So you people who cannot seem to type an email, Let's try to email nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com, or I'm just going to make shit up. That's all there is to it. I just make shit up. And, of course, you can give us a call tonight at 646-668-8583. And as Donna mentioned, podcast merch, tpublic.com slash user slash nightthoughts. And here we are, episode 15, Ocasic and Or. I'm pretty excited about this one, Donna. I am too. I'm really excited. We've had this one planned for a long time. We have. I don't want people to be confused. It's, we're not going to necessarily be talking about Ocasek and Orr, you know, the, their incarnation of their back in 1974 or whenever that was. It's not the topic of the episode is not that duo, right? It's bigger than that. No, we are going to be talking about um, Henry Ocasek and um, <laughs> Jacob Orr, um, they are a couple of historical figures um, in my hometown. Ooh. They were the first, first men to market indoor plumbing 
in my town. <laughs> and you know, we figured, hey, serve a name of Cassock and Orr. Hey, what a coincidence. Let's put them on the Cars podcast. You know what I mean. I don't want yeah. people coming on here thinking that we're going to be talking about them, you know, playing at the Idler and and singing Buddy Holly covers the whole time. Oh, okay. So <laughs> we, but but we do have to address um, the whole fact of you know there there are there are um, great great things that people think of when they think Ocasek and Or. There's also negative things that people think of when they think of Ocasek and Or. And, and, you know, we, you've got to bring those things up and, and, uh, you know, as, as we go along. Right. Right. We win. We will. But I have to tell you, I, I have zero notes for this episode because Dave, we didn't really talk. I mean, you gave me like a really brief, like, uh, you know, this, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what draws people to Benjamin and what draws people to Rick. And it's, you yeah. Know, and well, I it's I can't wrap my brain about that. I so I thought and thought and should I you know do I write down their history? Do I do my favorite songs that they did? I mean, know they're talented. I just could not come up with any. I did not write down a single thing on my paper in my notebook today except for the date. But you know, so, Donna. In all fairness, as as the uh, I guess the producer of the longest running and number one podcast about the cars. Um, I keep you in the dark on purpose to keep our talk spontaneous. Well, that's good. I like, I can appreciate that. I just don't want to sound like an idiot when you ask me uh, some question and I'm Donna, going, uh, uh, I know the answer is somewhere. But Donna, just the fact that you're podcasting with me, people think you're an idiot. I mean, come on. You got to get over that lady. They're like, well, why are they? Why, why is she podcasting with that asshole? He's insensitive and he's an asshole. Why, why, they, why is he podcasting with him? He, she's an idiot. That's Dave, what they're Dave. saying. No, no. Just, hey, just saying. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. So, oh, well. so you, you've explained a little, a little bit about it. And, um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, the, the disclaimer um, for this whole, you know, you ever notice we have a lot of disclaimers on this podcast? Oh, yeah. That's what, who, who, we do crappy audio and we do disclaimers. Do we, That's what we do. And we offend. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. But I never hear about it. I never hear about the offenses, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. you've, you, you, you've got this, this, you know, thing. It's the elephant in the room. And there's always um, a debate um, that, that comes to the forefront of, uh, you know, be- between Rick and, and Benjamin. And um, because it, it's, and it's funny because no one would think of, you know, having a debate um, about, you know, between Elliot and Greg or Elliot and David or, you know, right, right. Or, or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, Rick and Ben always seems to, always seems to pop up. So, you yeah. know, the, the, the disclaimer um, before we even start is, you know, before people start picking up two by fours and iron pipes and, and uh, <laughs> so forth Torch, is that, light their torches and- yeah. And, and, <laughs> and we talk about, um, you know, negative things um, that, that may or may not have gone on in the, in the relationship between Rick Lukasik and Benjamin Orr is that, you know, people need to remember that before Benjamin passed away, amends were made. They were cool with each other. Yeah. And that's the part that matters the most right there. It doesn't matter, you know, in the 90s and this and that and blah, blah, blah and da, da, da and so forth. No. In the, in the end, amends were made. Yeah. And uh, I always think back to the interview from the Cars Live DVD. And I think it's um, my buddy uh, Gruno tipped me off to, if you look up, look it up on YouTube, it's during part six, I'm pretty sure. Um, Gruno will correct me if I'm wrong, where Rick makes mention of something about if he wanted a song 
sang well that he would have Benjamin do it. And he kind of puts his hand on Benjamin's back. And, mm, and I remember yeah. when I saw that, I was like, man, see, amends were made. They're cool with each other. So, you know, cool thing. Yeah. Alongside that, Dave, I would say that the only people that really know what went on uh, between Rick and Ben are Rick and Ben. And so we can speculate all we want, and we may or may not do that on the show. But, um, you know, what it really comes down to is that we don't know. You know, and it's not our business uh, to go really deep with that because that was between those two. And, um, and so that's important to remember, too. And then, like you said, of course, amends were made. And that, again, is between them. So, and, and the other elephant in the room um, is the fact that when, when it comes to favorites, um, you know, in the band, you know, you're, you, you, for, for lack of a better way to state it, and I know you're going to hate me stating it this way, but you, you are very Team Benjamin. I am very yeah. Team Rick. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and so, you know, it, sure as shit, we're going to have some, some debate during this podcast. So, you know, there's another disclaimer, you know, Donna and I are cool with each other. All right. Yes. So I don't want want people to think (laughs) that I'm flipping Donna off in the microphone or it's, you know, it's a good thing we're not Skyping this episode. (laughs) So we can see each other. I wouldn't want to see Donna cry, you know. Oh, oh, you're not going to make me cry. Are you? (laughs) No, I'm not going to make you cry. Have I ever made you cry? I don't think I have. Think about no. it. You might have made me cry about the uh, the panorama turntable cover. <laughs> really? That's so we're gonna bring that up again. I'm, Holy crap. <laughs> I'm gonna explain it all over again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a woman, Dave. That issue yeah, will never yeah. die. <laughs> you got it. You got it. So um, anyway, no, no. So, you've never made me cry. You've never yeah. made me cry. I appreciate that. Well, I, I appreciate that you say that, and that gives me the opportunity to tell you that you have made me cry many, many no. times, Donna. No. Many yes. times. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. When, you're, when your children call up and they're asking what's for dinner, I cry because oh I'm a teacher, <laughs> damn it, and I care about children, and it, oh it pains God. me to see children neglected and mistreated. It, oh, you know. please. Wow. My kids and, are so spoiled. And you make poor Nick, you make poor Nick YouTube us. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, it's like a sweatshop in your house. He's like probably chained to a chair doing the YouTube well, you, stuff that you and I cannot figure out. <laughs> and you recall that I do make them make Huckleberry Taffy, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you got that Huckleberry Taffy sweatshop going on there. <laughs> Right. Holy moly. Yeah. Oh, I can just yeah. imagine in the cold winter months, everything's Huckleberry, isn't it? <laughs> Huckleberry jam, kids. Huckleberry jam. Huckleberry syrup. Yep. Huckleberry pie for dessert. It's all about the Huckleberries. Hey, Huckleberries before, are awesome. Before I met you, I didn't even know there was really a Huckleberry. I just thought it was, you know, Huckleberry <laughs> hound. I didn't. <laughs> I had no clue. <laughs> well, they're a real you, thing. And you sent me that first package of Huckleberry Taffy, and I'm thinking, what, Huckleberry? What the heck? Is that like a slang name for LSD? What's going on? What's she, <laughs> what's she pushing here? Does she want me to sell this stuff? What? <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. More tears shed, I'm sure, over that. Yeah. All right, yeah. so episode 15, Ocasek and Orr. Um yeah. Let me let, let me start off with this thought. Um, you know, we, we're talking about the team, Team Benjamin, Team Rick thing, and you know, in general, the whole the whole thing I think comes down to what initially attracted individual people to the cars. Um, you know, okay. I think everyone has their has their favorite members. Um, you know, according to what their initial attraction was, and you know how we identify with it. And there's, you know, probably obvious reasons for fans that have their pro Rick or pro, uh, pro Benjamin sides. So mm-hmm. with that said, you know, my initial draw um, as, you know, 14 year old little Davy 
who was crying about, you know, orangey skies, um, was, was twofold. Um, you know, first, first I was attracted to the synthesizer, um, aspect of the cars, but when it, when it came right down to it, you know, the Rick's lyrics really connected with me, but the, and and I can remember thinking this driving in my car, like 16 year old Davy, the, the thing that I really identified with the most, or I, that I really appreciated the most, um, and, and this isn't a, a gouge at, at Rick or anything, but Rick's vocals, I mean, he's, his singing is not, is not, you know, at the same level as Benjamin's, obviously, and, and I'm sure he knows that, but I could identify with that. I mean, I could sing along to it, um, you know, and, and thought, which I can sing this stuff, you know, it's, you know, I, I wasn't, it didn't, uh, uh, it, uh, I, I identified with, you know, this guy who was, you know, kind of on the geeky side and, you know, his singing was, you know, quirky and, and so forth. And, and, uh, um, you know, that's, it, that was just my big initial attraction to the band. Right. He was very, he was very normal. You know, he was like a Freddie Mercury type, you know, that more classic, trained vocal sound that you would hear on some other vocalists. Rick, certainly not like that. No, and right? you caught, you, you, you caught me. <laughs> yeah. You caught me. You caught me mid slurp <laughs> of my, uh, my Mountain Dew. <laughs> Sorry. So I, I couldn't yeah, have answered her. I, I would have done another cough. Oh yes. Well, let's keep that to a minimum. Yeah. Well, I'm saying is I understand. I can understand where you're coming from there with Rick, being able to identify with Rick. Yeah, it was a, it was a big deal, and and I think I've said before that um, that I I never even realized there were two singers until you know past the first album. Um, you know, I just I thought that that difference in in vocal tones was just you know rick with a head cold or not and uh you know so i i just i thought it was all rick yeah um and of course you know you didn't have the all of the visual that we have now yeah i mean you it was all radio and the few th- you know appearances on tv yeah and the, the first time i caught them on tv and realized oh my god that guy sings he sings you know was was a uh, midnight special because that was yeah a big yeah deal. yeah so, hey, I've got this, um, the, I'm, I'm not sure if you are aware of this book, Donna. This might be a book you don't have. What? Have you heard of Frozen Fire, The Cars by Toby Goldstein? <laughs> oh, hmm. Let me think about that. Hmm. Uh, what do I, wait, what do I have in my hot, sweaty little hand? Right now. Yeah, right so now. So we agree. Frozen Fire. We, do. we so agree on something. Well, I have open to to page eleven. Okay. Um, within the chapter called "Exploration and Discovery Before 1972," and okay. it, if if you will uh, humor me, I'd like to read the part of um, where it talks about Rick meeting Benjamin. Perfect. Go for it. It says. Should, should you want me to just read this in my normal adult voice? Or do you want me to do yeah, my school school reading no. picture book voice? No, don't do okay. school voice. Just do regular voice. <laughs> okay. Morning, girl. Sit down, crisscross applesauce, hands in lap. <laughs> no laughing, Donna. I'll send. I'll Sorry, send Mr. you. Curry. I'll send you to the safe seat. All right. So in 1969, Rick Lukasik met Ben Orr in a Columbus, Ohio booking agency where they both worked. Immediately, the outgoing former teenage idol. Oh, was that Rick? (laughs) Was he the the outgoing former teenage idol? And the (laughs) introspective writer found an opportunity for growth in each other's company. The itinerant pair left Ohio and for several years roamed a wide area, including Ann Arbor, Michigan, New York City, and Woodstock, New York. At various times, they played Buddy Holly songs as a duet, hard rock in short-lived bands, and snuck their own songs into the top 40 club sets 
they'd been hired to perform. They'd been hired to perform. By 1972, oh my gosh, this is a word that I will, oh, iconoclastic, I'm sorry. And by 1972, yeah. the iconoclastic duo, are you reading along with me, Donna? Duo of course sense I am. that their, oh geez Louise, <laughs> sense that their musical abilities might best develop in the university oriented city of Boston. It's very, very well written. Yes. Toby, you should write for a living, buddy. That is very well written. <laughs> you know what? I figured out that Toby is a girl. No way. Yes. Seriously? It's true. Yes. I wrote a book review of this book, of course. And I thought it, that Toby was a guy. And then I, after I published my little article, I was corrected that, in fact, Toby's a woman. And I looked her up, and sure enough, a chick. No way. That's kind of like... Um, the the fact that you, you know, go by Donna, but you're really Dante. <laughs> wow. Who'd have thought? Yeah. Toby yeah. Well, Goldstein yeah. is a girl. Yeah. Donna Sweet Purple Great. June is, is Dante. No, Prince I'm of not. Darkness. <laughs> you know, someone somewhere is going, no shit. <laughs> Donna is Dante. Yeah, that's going to be spread around, too, on social media. You know it's going to come back at some point. <laughs> it makes me wonder what Dante's thinking. Oh, geez, Dave, give it up. Just give it up. <laughs> Poor Dante. You know, his birthday is right around the corner. Is it really? A little shout out. Yeah, Dante, uh, October 29th, I believe. Is really? Around. I believe so. Well, Dante, happy so. birthday. Him, so, yeah. oh, well, you just spoiled that because Dante's listening. Dante's always listening. No, he's not listening right now. I know what Dante's up to. Really? Inside yeah. scoop on Dante. All right. I just talked to Dante so, today, yeah. Really? Sorry, awesome. Go yeah, go on. Sorry. So that, that, that whole early background with, with uh, Rick and Benjamin is, is intriguing to me because you've got, um, you know, as, as I said in the book, that, you know, the formal, former teen idol, and then you've got Rick, who is, is um, you know, kind of, kind of a uh, gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of an introvert, I would guess. And and these two getting together, you know, it's just you 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 look, you think about them, and you or you, and you look at them, and you think, how could these two people end up together? You right. know, it's it's very, very interesting to me. And and then the fact that they you know, I did the, the, the folk thing and, and we're just very, I keep using Rick words, very eclectic in their, in their, the music that they were putting out. Um, and I, th- I think what's being mentioned in there, about the hard rock or whatever, wouldn't that be a Nirvana ID that they're talking about there? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't heard any of that. Um, but, you know, I remember Rick saying in some other interview that they have, he has tapes of them, you know, screaming and doing all sorts of wild other types of music. Holy in shit. Early days. So, yeah, I know, right? Get me in that vault. Hey, I'm just saying, Rick, Mr. Okasik, send me any of that old stuff and I will send <laughs> you a Night Thoughts button. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even throw in a sticker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I cannot believe our bribes didn't work before. I, we're going to have to step it up. We just have to. Hey, Rick, you know, Rick is a simple, simple man. You know, a button and a sticker, he will appreciate. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that Nirvana ID um, screaming stuff in, in yeah, my hands just off that. Because, you know, Rick's listening right now. So I'm sure he is. I'm like sure him. he is. Um, okay, so, go ahead. So I, I have... Um, you were talking about uh, the guys uh, covering Buddy Holly's songs, and and uh, I, I do have um, the cut of them doing "Every Day," which I love. I love that. Okay, good. And I don't, I don't know if people are aware of the origin of this um, cut being out there, but Rick originally posted that on his MySpace page. And yes. for you people who don't know what MySpace is, that used to be a cool thing. <laughs> along with <laughs> along with AOL, <laughs> but 
<laughs> yeah, he, he posted that on there. So um, I'd like to play that if that's okay. I would love it. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. Every day is to get close to going faster than a one coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey, hey. Every day is to get faster. Everyone to go ahead and ask her. Love like yours will surely come my way. drawn to Rick's vocals and I mean it's so obvious um, in the cars he does not sing the same way he did in Okasik and Orr um, he, no you know you hear listen to Captain Swing and he, he has adopted that more you know that quirkier style but you know listening to him and Ben in, um, in that song and um, uh, Never Gonna Get o- uh, Never Gonna Get Over You I think um, and even what he sings in Twilight Superman and Jezebel and some of those other things where you hear him, he has a totally different vocal style. He's, he's really quite talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the, the, the Buddy Holly influence, um, and I've even heard uh, Bob Dylan influence on, on Rick's vocals is, is pretty heavy. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I've always, always liked about him is that, that kind of jumpy, Quirky, we keep using quirky, quirkiness. Yeah. Um, that he has. And you know, in those early recordings, I, because I've always felt like uh, in the cars, it's so obvious to me Ben's voice versus Rick's voice. I have never gotten them confused in the cars. I, I, there was a time when I did not know that Ben was singing, but I, we knew there was a, a separate singer, and you know, I couldn't quite figure it out. But there was obviously a difference in their voices to me. But when you listen to those early recordings, there are times when I think, is that Ben or is that Rick? They <laughs> do sound very, very similar to me in those early ones. Yeah. So what, sure. um, as, as far as, you know, what Rick brought to the cars, what's, what's the first thing that just comes to the top of your head? Lyrics. Majorly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And, and and I often wondered if, you know, Benjamin was singing songs and thinking in his head, what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's such a funny, I like, I think of that as a serious question because 
David has said before that he, you know, that there were times when he was like, I don't even understand what you guys are saying. And he, he, you know, as I recall, my impression was that he didn't even want to know what the lyrics were about. He, <laughs> you know, he just was going to play his drums. And even Elliot, I think, expressed something along those lines. Um, but, you know, I, I have a feeling that Benjamin and Rick had such a friendship that, that they were probably completely in tune with what they were talking about. I, <laughs> I imagine, yeah, I imagine that he, that he and Rick thought alike in that way. And I, I, I bet they had lyrics that they just laughed over and had their private jokes and that they, you know, referred to something that experienced together or who knows. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I have thought of that before. I think, I think Ben was on board. I really do. So that makes me think of two things. First, um, I remember seeing a quote um, from uh, Greg Hawks saying that his favorite Rick lyric was chicken counters fill your bowls. <laughs> and, um, and if you remember on the interview, on the DVD interview, Elliot mentioning that they had, they had their little inside jokes and um, on top yes, of my nerves. Yes, yes. yes. The joke. And it makes you wonder, was that, was that a joke before and Rick put that phrase in a song or it became a joke after, you know, Rick introduced it into a song? Not yeah. sure, but. Oh, I'd I, love I mean, to know I, all those stories. I, I always thought I got that lyric, but since they say it's an inside joke, maybe I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think they were probably pretty funny, those guys. <laughs> I would have liked to so, have uh, sat around and listened to them yak. But you're, as far as what Rick brought to the cards, you're not going to bring up his his uh, super human don't, ability? Don't. Don't. I... <laughs> Come on, Donna. And I, I think where... our listeners can agree. Rick <laughs> is super human. He oh, is. my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that Stephen Colbert clip so funny when when he asked him, <laughs> he says something like, uh, do you believe that Jesus walked on water? And Rick says, yes. oh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And Stephen Colbert says, that's called faith, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let's just, just think about the, the history, the history of Rick in video. No, the guy no. falls from a helicopter, Donna, falls, <sighs> survives. He 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 morphs himself into lipstick <laughs> and, <laughs> and insects and and clothes hangers. He walks on water, and then here, the, <sighs> the thing that just blew me away about Rick Ocasek, the guy pilots a giant penis through space. He oh, is the captain. My He's gosh. the captain of the penis <laughs> spaceship that's going through space. That brings a lot he to a is. band. Captain Rick. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm giving I'm giving it off she's got the captain. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, um, I told you before you cannot use this as any sort of evidence of any kind of superiority of Rick Ocasek. But now but I'm I so can so say no. that what a great sense of humor Rick Ocasek has to let himself be put in those positions um, in, in those videos. I mean, well, I, mean, it's quite I think comical. only, I think only prepubescent gullible 12 year old boys actually believe that any of that happened. Well, that's you, Dave. That's you. Donna, just for the sake of argument, <laughs> I, I wasn't 12. I was 21 when he walked on the water. I mean, come on. Oh, no. I was, I was, I I was 26 <laughs> when he was piloting the USS Penis Were into you the still galaxy. Were you at that point? <laughs> well, in in mind, yes, but in body, no. <laughs> I just want you to get the I facts straight. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, no, those things are in fact not true, and I hate to break your bubble, <laughs> but uh, no. That didn't happen. And I mean, I agree with you that I'm sure, I'm sure he has a sense of humor about it, but it could also be argued that 
or not argued maybe, but um, I'm sure there's a contingent out there that views it as enjoying being in those kind of positions because, you know, there's a, there, he has a, mm, I wouldn't say a reputation, but people think of him as maybe being pretty arrogant and uh, controlling, which he has admitted himself. And, you know, that maybe he enjoyed being in those positions where it looked like, yeah, he's the man. He's the one in charge. And the other guys were all sort of pushed to the back. And so I mean, well, there's I, some of that out there. I, I can say this, that when, when you think about the cars, you know, they're you know, new wave. Um, once again, the word quirky comes up and so forth. But if you think of the cars without Rick Ocasek, do, would, would, with him not being the front man, of the cars, would they still have that, that edge to them? I mean, with, with his, with his fashion sense, um, with his vocal style, with his lyrics, um, you know, it, it wouldn't, well, let's face it. If um, the cars without Rick Ocasek, you've got Rundgren. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Do not use the R word in this podcast. I'm alone. I'm alone. Oh. I'm alone. Oh. Yeah. No, um, but you know it's true of all of all of the members of the cars. Without each one of them, you don't have the edge. You don't have the cars. I, I mean, agree you're right. with that. But I'm just talking about them face value when when it comes to just just their image or whatever. Who? I mean, I think David David probably had a lot of input in in their image or whatever. But I, I think Rick was at the forefront of all that just just because of his well, look um, and. And, you know, all, all of his stylings that, that went along with it. I, I think if, if Rick wasn't there with the cars in the beginning, they, they lose an amount of it. They, they become more, more of, um, of, God, for lack of a better word, just your, just your, yeah, more mainstream, more of your average rock band without Rick. Well, you know, it's, that's hard to say, Dave, because, yes, he's, he's eclectic. He definitely draws the eye. He has a, a very individual look. But <laughs> Benjamin could have definitely carried the look of the band on his shoulders, and it would have had a different – it would definitely have had a different presentation, but it would have been quite pleasing. I'll just say it that way. Uh, and also, um, we'll never know because – Rick did emerge as the face of the band. And, you know, we kind of talked about this when we did the episode on video, that whether it was Rick's design or not Rick's design, however the decision-making was done, after, you know, Panorama and Touch and Go, the guys were pushed to the back, the other members. And Rick was put up in front. And we talked about how, um, of all the videos, of all the studio-made videos, there was only one that featured Benjamin on vocals, even though Benjamin sang quite a few of the, of the popular songs of the cars. And so Rick's songs were the ones that were made in the videos, and Rick was put in the front. And like we said, in Magic, yeah, he's walking on water. And where's everybody else? Here's, you know, five seconds of the rest of the band. Was David even in the video? I don't, I don't know. You- but they're relegated to the very end of the video. So you're saying you would wanted to have seen the the rest of the band drown because they in <laughs> fact cannot walk on water. Um, I'm quite sure that it's Benjamin terrible, could have, Benjamin can walk on water. I'm quite sure. <laughs> I, just, I can't I begin to list the miracles Greg in I'm a sure canoe. Could do. <laughs> what? I'm just imagining Greg in a canoe. <laughs> Paddling out to the him, center of the pool. He'd, he'd be hanging <laughs> off the edge of David's canoe because he wouldn't be able to figure out how to get into it the right way. It would have suicide <laughs> doors on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, there's, 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 there's not, you know, Benjamin was uh, a hell of a musician um, and uh, an outstanding vocalist, you know, and I, I would go so far as to say when it comes to musicianship and vocal abilities, Benjamin was way above Rick. And, um, you know, he, he brought that, that added, um, 
as that I guess that mainstream quality um, to the band. Um, you know, and on on the other hand, you know, Rick's musical abilities, you know, him being you know the lyrics, arrangements, creativity, <clears throat> um, that uh, you know, production, so forth. You know, that was his areas that he was, you know, way above Ben on. Um, Benjamin, you know, is noted as saying he wasn't good with lyrics. Um, And, you know, as far as, I I mean, I don't know how much he was into production. I haven't heard, I mean, it makes me wonder how much he was involved with with the production of the lace. But, um, you know, I think Rick is more of your behind the scenes guy musically. Um, you know, likes doing the production, writing, those kinds of things. Didn't like to tour. Benjamin is more of a uh, entertainer um, who who loved to tour, and you know the, the the rock and roll guy. And they and they just kind of balance balance each other out. Right. Can I can I say some things? Sure. My turn. Um. Well, okay. So let me back up. So you're when well, you were first when we first started down the Rick Road. You know, you were talking about that being the your Rick attraction. The Rick Road. <laughs> I don't mean I'm going on down yellow. to the Rick Road. Yeah, I don't mean the yellow brick road. Um, <laughs> so bad. I know, boo. We, anyway, just lost, uh, we just lost five listeners on that bed, Jeff. <laughs> That's, is that worse than get the flock out of here? Get the flock out of here. <laughs> Okay, so of course I've told my little story before about how my um, my initial dive into this Cars obsession was because of Benjamin, and you know I had liked the Cars music before, so I was familiar with it. But uh, once you know I got I got a, I saw Benjamin perform, then it was all over for me. And um, I am like you said, Team Ben all the way, and um, Love his, you're right, He vocally amazing. Um, I don't know much about bass playing, but I've heard and read that he's a, I mean, he sounds good to me, and I've heard and read from other professionals that he was an excellent bass player. He was obviously a very talented musician all the way around. He played drums, he played rhythm, he played bass, um, he sang, he said he could, he could uh, get away with the keyboards if he needed to. He was very versatile, and... Um, and yes, photogenic, um, quite handsome and um, magnetic. And um, so he brought all of these skills and talents into the band. And so when you're talking about the strengths and weaknesses of Rick and Ben, I've looked at it in this way that um, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and um, maybe make some people mad, but I I don't believe that Benjamin was a lyricist by any stretch. He has said numerous times that he was not comfortable writing lyrics. I don't think that um, I don't think that he had a passion for writing lyrics. I don't think that that there were words in him that needed to get out. But you definitely see that in Rick. Rick was all about words, writing, writing, writing. He was passionate about lyrics. I don't believe that Benjamin was. Benjamin was passionate about performing and about music. I mean, I believe he had a lot of music in him that needed to get out um, as opposed to words. And, yes, I think he loved being in front of people. I think he loved performing. Um, they were not, we talked about this before, they were not uh, hugely interactive with their crowds, but he knew how to make a connection with the audience. And, um, and so you're right, there's this balance. What Rick brought, Benjamin didn't have, I don't believe. And at the same time, Rick needed Benjamin. Um, if you think about when they got started, Rick, he's got this quirky look. You know, he was developing this, this sort of different voice. And um, what they were trying to do, trying to break into a music scene that was stagnant, 
They wanted to be different, but they they couldn't be too different or else they would have missed the mark. And so I think that this is just my, it's just these are the things I think on and, and come to these conclusions that uh, Rick needed Ben to be that um, stepping stone, but he needed to be that, that connection between the um, eclectic new wave punkish sound that they had mixed in with their classic rock sound he needed Benjamin to bridge that gap, I think, in order to be successful. And I think that Benjamin needed Rick because Benjamin, I don't think, was strong at really writing or creating the, the songs in their entirety himself, although he could perform them wonderfully. So you think about their first single, Just What I Needed, blowing everybody away. That was the perfect combination of them, Rick's lyrics, the music between both of them and Benjamin's performance. Perfect. Just the perfect meeting of, of the stars aligning in the sky. I'll let you talk now. (laughs) Aren't you, wasn't I good just listening the whole time? You were, I'm sorry. I got on a a bit of a, I went off, didn't I? Do you understand? Do you people listening understand how my brain works? Things are popping into my head like every other <laughs> second. Yet I, knew I, was they were. A, I was a good boy. I was a good boy. <laughs> yeah. You didn't interrupt but, you know, me one I, single time. Thank you. I I I, I totally uh, agree with you, Donna, on what you said. And I really like what you said about uh, being the bridge. That's yes. uh, That's very very well said. And you know the the thing that um, I've always noticed throughout time, like if if you know, when back when I was making the mixtapes, <laughs> be like, before the Cars Greatest Hits came out, I'd have like Dave's Greatest The Cars Hits, you know, stuff like that <laughs> to play. And if I, you know, if I go through the, their discog, dis, discog, dis, you know what I mean. I can't talk. Yep, gotcha. Discog. It's been a long week, folks. Um, That's all right. And and if I went through and I chose my favorite songs. You know, more than likely, I always ended up with a majority of songs with Benjamin on lead vocals. Um, mm, yeah. Now, you know, why is that? Is it is it because Benjamin's more vocally talented? You know, you, you could say that, but I also think that you know Rick knew what what Benjamin's talents were, and he mm-hmm. knew what it took to make a good song a great song. And right. um, so they knew what kind of song sounded best with each other's, you know, vocal talents. And, you know, that's, you, you think about Benjamin singing, um, you know, like you might think, or, you know, Misfit Kid. It it doesn't right. fit. It, right. it wouldn't fit. Um, you know, it doesn't fit with him lyrically. It certainly doesn't fit with him with the, with the way those vocals need to go in those songs. So, um, you know, Benjamin brought beautiful vocals on songs that, that Rick could never pull off. Um, right. You know, and you yeah. know, even though Rick has, you know, like, you know, I've heard Rick do drive. Um, and it's, it's apples and oranges for me. I don't, I don't sit and, Rick, and listen to Rick um, sing drive and think, Oh God, he's really butchering that. You know, Benjamin did so much better. I, I look at it as, as a songwriter, you know, performing his song. Um, right. But he, uh, you know, Rick, Rick was very aware of, and I'm sure Benjamin was too, of, of, of what songs they would sound good on. Um, right. Great example is that, that cap and swing um, cut of Bye Bye Love with Rick singing. I mean, yes. it's, it's, it's there's a difference in in how they go about, you know, singing the lyrics, but it's also, you know, that's that's a, a good song, and Benjamin, when he sings it, makes it a great song. Yes, I totally agree. There are several from the Captain Swing days that uh, where there's recordings of Rick singing it and recordings of Benjamin singing it. I can't... Um, I'd have to look it up. Um, I wrote an article about it on my blog. Oh, you have blog? Yep, or .com. I didn't know that. 
I do. I wrote a two-part series on uh, Captain Swing. Uh, anyway, there, but there were several songs that um, where there's recordings of each one of them singing it, and um, it's interesting to listen to the differences. And there are some where I like I like both versions. They're great. In fact, today I was just listening to, um, so we have Never Gonna Get Over You, the audio, um, which is one that Okasik and Orr sang, and there's a really great blending of their voices. But then I, I just was listening today to a, an audio of that same song where Benjamin just did the vocals by himself, and I definitely prefer the one where the two of them are sharing um, the mic. It's, it's much better. Um, so it's interesting. You're right. They knew they knew what they were doing. They knew their strengths and weaknesses, I think. Um, their relationship was so long. Like I said, I, I just feel like they were that kind of friend. They were just in tune with each other. They had that kind of a friendship where they could make those decisions and be successful at it. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the cuts that you sent me, correct? It is. I did send you Never Gonna Get Over You. Would, would you like to listen to it? I would love to listen to it. It's so beautiful. Well, let's listen to it. Let's give it a spin okay. here. And do, do you want to give us any more background on this when it was done and, and the circumstances surrounding it? Uh, well, no, I think it's just uh, it's a demo that they made um, in, I think, 1974. It was, uh, and I believe Rick, or, um, excuse me, I believe Greg is on the keyboards. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, and of course, uh, Glenn Evans on drums. <clears throat> and um, wait, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> excuse me. And um, yeah, so I think uh, it's just from a demo that they made back in in those days. Love it. All right, so let's let's take a listen to Glenn Evans on uh, drums. <laughs> going to play right oh great oh great thanks blog Uh-oh. talk make us look like freaking idiots what happened it's 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 20 seconds in in and i hear nothing does it need to be unmuted somehow and now it's just spinning see i didn't knock on wood enough donna and I'm just going to let it spin, and probably somewhere in the middle of a sentence, it'll start up. Because <laughs> that's just the way it is. <laughs> well, it's oh. quite nice, anyway. So, blog, and talk, you can, it, blog talk, blog talk, blog talk. We'll post Not it in our panorama talk. group, too. Yeah. And nothing's working now. And I'm sure if I, uh, if I contacted the blog talk people, they'd say, oh, it's something wrong with your setup. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you don't you don't talk about Glenn, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it. I bet he probably sabotaged it. He probably has I'm copyrights. Sure. Well, hey, so. we had we had Brungren sabotaged our uh, our Friday the thirteenth, so you know That's true. Now it's Glenn. It happens. It happens. Oh well, hey, while we're waiting, I have some, yes. I have some data for you. Okay. You know, I always refer to like- you as data Donna. Oh, you do. <laughs> Research <laughs> Donna. And, you know, my in my neck of the woods, in my profession, we use data a lot. Yes. Yes, you do. Is that kid, is that kid reading more? Let's look at the data. Um, yeah. Does that kid have a problem behaviorally after recess? Let's look at the data. So I wow. went through and went through the, the entire catalog of the cars and just went and, and looked in, to see who sang what. And out of 61 songs, so I wasn't, you know, counting the songs where they're in there together. Um, <clears throat> Benjamin sang 22 out of 61 songs, which is 37%. Okay. Rick sang 38 out of 61 which is 63%. Okay. Okay. And when you add those up, it comes to 60. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just noticed that. Yeah, 22 <laughs> out of 61, 38 out of 61, 22 plus 38, 60. <laughs> so you, is that the kind of math you do in your profession? Is that how common the, core? Is how that the that hell was? is that kid teaching our children? <laughs> So I'm, I, you know what? I probably have one of their duets in there. But anyway, yeah. so then I went through and just to, looked at all the 
the the Billboard 100, all the songs that the the Cars hit the 100 with. And of course, they've in order. You had Drive at number three, Shake It Up made it to four, Tonight She Comes seven, You Might Think seven, Magic twelve, Let's Go fourteen, You Are the Girl number seventeen, Hello Again twenty. Just what I needed, 27, and that is a crock of shit. That song should have gone number one. Um, right, I know. I, I'm not the one, 32, why can't I have you, 33. Um, Best Friends Girl, 35. I thought that charted higher than that. Uh, Touch and Go, 37. Since You're Gone, 41. It's All I Can Do, 41. Good Times Roll, 41. Coming Up You, 74. And Strap Me In, 85. So okay. if you look at that, and just out of their hits, Benjamin um, sang on five of those songs, 28%. Rick sang 13, 72%. Okay. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose. I don't know what I'm trying to prove other than I, suppose. I think they put more songs out that Rick sang than, than Benjamin sang. Um but yet I go back to my, if I made up my little Davies greatest hits, I guarantee you I'd have more Benjamin songs than I would Rick songs, which is really weird for me right. since you know, I'm a Rick guy. Right. Well, and if you, so numerically, I guess that proves, you know, that someone could argue, well, Rick then was the more successful vocalist in the cars or, you know, Rick, because there is that, you know, like I said, there's that contingent that's you know going to argue going to argue the hardcore things. Um, so yes, numerically, yes, Benjamin's songs apparently didn't perform as well, but what are the most memorable songs, like you said, personally, but even like Drive being featured at, as part of Live Aid, Moving in Stereo as being in, you know, the uh, the beat to death scene from Ridgemont High, Fast Times Ridgemont High. Um <laughs> You just like what I needed. Music. Oh my gosh, please. That song is so much more than a chick walking out of a pool or whatever. I don't even, is that what the scene is? Is she coming out of a pool? <laughs> I, I, <sighs> I, I, I didn't notice. <laughs> I was you, good answer, Dave. That movie came out. I was, um, 20. Yeah. What year did I was it come 20-ish, out? 20 ish. 82. And, okay. you know, I was so overwhelmed with, the cars being in the soundtrack, I didn't even notice what was on the screen, Donna. I couldn't tell you. I thought I maybe it. she was like riding in a taxi cab or Knitting. scaling a mountain. Yes. I have no, I have no idea what happened. To <laughs> well, I was not ever allowed to see that movie, and then as an adult, I never went back and watched it. So I'm, I'm good with that. You wait. My, you've never watched Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I have not. Donna. Never, I'm Donna. Sorry. You think Sorry. you know somebody. You've I know, got to watch I'm... Fast Times at Ridgemont High. You've got really? to. Really? At this late stage? I don't know. Yes. Um, okay, I'll think about it. You have to my watch. point is, my point is, um, so moving in story was used in that. Just what I needed is still used in, you know, trailers for movies and commercials and all sorts of things, you know, to this day. So the songs... And granted, there are there are songs that Rick sings too that are still in the mainstream, but it would seem to me, and again, maybe I'm biased because I'm Team Ben, it would seem to me that whether they charted as well or not, the songs that Ben sang still get a lot of attention in our culture, yeah. in our media. Yeah, and that's, well, that's very that, telling. Like your your basic classic rock stations, what songs do they play the most? Just what I needed. Yep. Uh, bye bye love. Yep. Um, uh, let's go. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Best friends girl. That's best friends I mean, girl. That's Rick, but that's one. Yeah. Uh, good, good times roll. You'll hear that quite a bit. Oh yeah. Good times roll. Yeah. I but you've got moving in stereo. Yeah. Which always ticks me off when you hear moving in stereo on a classic rock station. It needs to go right into all mixed up. For sure. For sure. <laughs> you know, you know how with Journey, they always do. Um, we, uh, God, what songs they always played? Is it Wheel in the Sky and something else that goes together, or yeah. Love and Touch and Squeezing and Too Late and something else? Yeah, they always play um, those together, and they should do that with Moving in Stereo and All Mixed Up. 
to get you give the DJ a chance to go to the bathroom for God's sake. You See, know? there you have it. Well, I think they used to, from what I understand, they used to. They would just play, you know, like the whole Benjamin Orr trifecta of Bye Bye Love, Moving in Stereo, and All Mixed Up. I think that was common. That was why Roy Thomas Baker, one of the reasons why he did that. Because he did that with really? Queen, too. Oh, yeah. When, I read that. When I did the uh, the, the DJ thing, um, the Hour of the Cars deal that I did, the, the DJ I worked with um, told me that his go-to song when he had to go to the bathroom was Funeral for a Friend by Elton John. <laughs> what? I don't know. Funeral if I know for that, a Friend by Elton John. Have you ever heard that song? I don't it's think very I have. Long, first of all, um, <laughs> I thought you were going to yeah. say. Uh, I thought you were going to say. Uh, what's the Led Zeppelin duo? It's Live and Love and Made and uh, something else. There's well, you know, Stairway to Heaven's a pretty long song. You know, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. You guys would, you know, take a deuce, you know, during during that <laughs> one, but. Uh, um, but yeah, funeral for a friend. He said that was his go-to. Yeah, I just put on funeral for a friend. <laughs> Gotta go in there for a while. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just throw me off sometimes. <laughs> you know how it goes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so yes, I think that de- that Benjamin definitely made his mark uh, vocally regardless of what the numbers come out to be. I'm glad you looked those up, though. I thought about doing it, but, you know, I get pretty legalistic, and I thought, well, if I if I come in armed with, you know, with a lot of numbers and facts, uh, I might get bogged down. So I'm glad you did that. You know, this going back on our Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, pod that we did, how long ago was that, by the way? It seems like forever that we podcasted. <laughs> it, was only, it was only it was less than two 13th. weeks, I think, the 15th, I think. 15th? Um, yeah, I Sunday? always I always found it interesting that the Rock Hall has that photo of Benjamin in there. Right in the yeah on display. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I'm sure I'm sure you know I'm sure there's a Cleveland connection there, but well, yeah. the fact that if you're you're spotlighting somebody in a band, um, <laughs> that you, you have and, not inducted. <laughs> that you have not inducted, yeah. But uh, I always I always thought that was really cool that that they had that picture up there, and and yeah, the I funny thing is you know I, I visited the Rock Hall in ninety seven maybe ninety eight I don't remember it being there so it was probably put there afterwards because I I would have yeah. lost my shit if I would have <laughs> seen that in there. Yeah. Um, I'd like maybe to go I'm back and too. and and see it. I'd like to go back when the cars are inducted into the Rock Hall. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be amazing? I'm sure. I'm sure at Rock Hall is listening to our podcast right now. <laughs> I'm sure they are. What's the guy's yeah. name? Jan Wenner. Is, he, is that how you I say his no name? If you listen. I have no um, idea. Now let me ask you. This is a little side tangent thing, but since you brought up the uh, the stats there. Um, uh, solo stuff. Now you did you you read my revelation earlier this week that I in fact own zero Rick oh, Ocasek albums. I know. You know what? Fast I'm sure that made you cry. High. No. Yeah. I was. In in all seriousness, I was shocked. Really? I'm sorry. I cried. You. No, you, <laughs> you made me cry. I cried. <laughs> I shed Collect tears. Collect your tears in a bottle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you drinking from it right just, now? Just like Snape. <laughs> Um, so my question to you though is, um, you know, Benjamin only had the one solo album and, uh, stay the night broke the top 40. I don't remember exactly how high it went, but I have been curious. Um, I remember reading someone commenting that Benjamin's one single charted higher than any of the songs that Rick put out. Although I can't imagine that with emotion in motion and some of his other Things. I so think I'm Emotion in you know, Motion was probably the only one that did chart out of everything. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. I mean, I can't, I can't remember. I can remember, like on the radio, you know, they played the crap out of Emotion in Motion, but I was in a college town um, at yeah. that time. That's a great um, song. And True to You, I remember True to You was played. Um, okay. Because people, people thought it was a car song. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Well, Rick, Rick's put out seven albums, 
I think he's put out just as many solo albums as the Cars have. Huh. Put out albums. I think it's they're locked at seven apiece. See, and this I'm going off on another little rabbit trail, but that kind of confirms what I was what I my own opinion in the sense that here's Rick and granted Benjamin passed away. So it's not like they're on an even timeline. But um Rick after the cars broke up, continued to put out solo material for a really long time. I think Rick had that passion for writing. He had those songs in him that needed to get out. Benjamin had put out the lace. He was working on a second album, but he was, for whatever reasons, I don't know, kind of dragging his feet. I don't know, nothing really. He didn't really do a whole lot after that as far as um, uniquely. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't think of the word. He didn't generate things from within himself. He wrote, I understand, with John Kalisha's, I think everything he wrote, he had a collaborator on. Um, by the time he got to Big People, I mean, he, he was still rocking. There's no doubt about it. His voice was great. Performance was great. I just don't think that he had that in him. You know, I don't think he had those songs, complete songs in him to get out. I don't know. I think that might make people yeah. mad, but it just, it just doesn't seem to me like that was his thing. Well, in, in in all fairness, I'm sure the breakup of the cars um, probably hit Benjamin the most out of all the band members. Um, hmm. You know, I I I, I kind of view him as just you know kind of lying low. Um, Afterward. After that, you know, the, yeah. the first yeah. inclination you heard of anything popping up was you know in the early '90s. Yeah, ninety four. Um yeah. but you know, Rick's first solo L P came out well post well, cars the- came, came yeah, out yeah. in ninety one, Fireball Zone. Okay. Um I can't remember who stated it or where I heard it or read it or whatever, but you know f- Fireball Zone is 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 one of my favorite Rick um solo albums. Um and for those of you don't who don't know what album I'm talking about, it's the um, one that has the same picture of him from door to door, but it's had um, graphics work done to it, which was done by uh, Paulina. Um, very cool that she that she did that. But yeah. what what I had read was that 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 was his quote unquote kind of comeback album and then it didn't it didn't do well um and and not because it isn't a great album i just think because you know the record companies didn't didn't back it um right but it's it's not an unlike um this side of paradise uh, fireball zone is a lot like um beatitude and the fact that you've got songs that that you know might sound cars like but a majority of it is not cars like he's, you know, going off in, in, in a different direction. Um, I guess kind of similar to, to what door to door was, you know, very different. You know, he's got a reggae song on there. He's, he's his first time I'd ever heard him use um, acoustic guitar in songs mm-hmm. and um, you know, and, and he, and he continued, you know, going in that direction with his, with his other solo albums. Yeah. Um, I loved when that album came out. And then in 93, uh, Quick Change World came out. And okay. then 97 was Troubleizing, which I'm a big fan of too. I think my probably my top two Rick albums probably be Fireball Zone and Troubleizing out of all of those. And then I think 2005, hmm. no wait, yeah, 2005 was an extra day. And, and you need to listen said, to those, Donna. Well, I guess I do, yeah. I, do. I, the thing about Next Today that I remember seeing him in an interview saying that he got that title from his son because instead yeah. of saying tomorrow, his son would say Next Day. Yeah, and uh, uh, Paulina and, tweeted that too. I tweeted yeah. uh, something about that album and she said that, and I thought that was so cool. Isn't that I mean, the how sweetest cool thing? Is it? Yes, it's the sweetest thing. And how cool is it that his son knows that this album is titled for something that he said. 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I love it. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> if I did that um, with, with, with my grand, uh, daughter, it would, I'd have to title my album, um, Paw Paw Can I Have Candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, my new album, my new CD called Paw Paw Can I Have Some Candy. <laughs> and the I'm answer silly. being, the answer being, no, we don't eat candy for breakfast. <laughs> wow. You really say that? Yeah. Cause that's when it usually comes up. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want to eat? You want cereal? You want eggs? You want toast? Papa, can I have some candy? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Not even after breakfast. You can't yeah. have candy. What the heck? <laughs> okay, so hey, you, you, Wait, Donna. You're muffling out there. Oh, sorry. I was organizing you, my are, bookshelf. Are you in danger? <laughs> Is, is someone putting a chloroform-soaked rag over your mouth? <laughs> Quick, listeners. <laughs> is that better? Someone must Call not have liked that I. <laughs> someone must have not liked that I suggested that Ben wasn't a lyricist. Someone came to get me. Mm. Um. Okay, so we we talked about them vocally, and um, musically. Of course, Benjamin Benjamin's bass is always just just draws me in all the time. I have said this before that I am not good at discerning different sounds a lot. Um, I have a really hard time actually, and I've thought about this a lot, like trying to figure out what exactly Rick is sounds what 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 sounds he's making on a song. Like, um, I'll. I'll watch him perform live so I can pick it out a little better, but I often can't, depending on the song, I often can't figure out what Rick's doing on stage. Uh, but Benjamin. <laughs> are you, wait, are you suggesting that Rick is the Danny Bonaducci of the cars? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Uh, if you look close, his guitar's not plugged into anything. <laughs> No, Rick is a very good guitarist. You know, well, I, if, if if you see some, you know, some of the clips you can find on YouTube of him, of him playing just, you know, solo with an acoustic guitar, yeah. he's, he's a very, yeah. very, very accomplished guitarist. Um, I don't know oh, how yeah. his lead, lead skills are, but um, you know, but let's let's face it, you know, guitar wise, you know, Elliot ruled the roost, and and you know, he he was a major part of that. Yeah. That sound, but you know, Rick oh, I, yeah, I agree. Well, and that's—I guess that's what I mean. I just can't can't always pick out what that means exactly. I mean, I, I kind of like I said, in some songs I can really go, okay, that you know, Rick must be doing something right there. But sometimes I can't. And um, you're right, acoustically, I love—I actually really enjoy listening to him um, play. And that clip you just posted on Twitter the other day, or um, the one. Uh, I'm not the I'm one. Not the one. What do you think? Oh, I know. oh, gosh, beautiful. So beautiful. I love it. Um, but then, uh, then I can pick out, and I often will uh, put my headphones on and just follow his fingers on that bass while I listen to my favorite Benjamin songs. And you know, there are um, several clips out there that are just isolated tracks of just Benjamin and, and the bass, and I really enjoy listening to those. It's very oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. Now, do you so think when when you have those those tracks that are out there, with just you know Benjamin vocals and bass, or Benjamin vocals and guitar only, is mm -hmm. um you know I'm not well versed in in production or whatever. Do you think that those are um, recordings that people have gotten a hold of, or do you think it's the the songs that people have isolated, been able to isolate the vocal track and the bass track and so forth? Is it is it reverse yeah. engineered or is it from the, the the makings of the song in the beginning? I just I just don't know. I mean, because I don't know how that stuff works either. I'm sure we have um, listeners out there that are into engineering that could maybe answer that question. I I don't know how it works. I mean, I understand that when they record the songs, they're on multi-track machines, and so you know, there's different tracks for each 
each you know each vocal each instrument um, and those kinds of things can you isolate tracks if you don't have recordings that are like that I mean I don't know yeah I wish there we were need more Roy, of them. we need Roy Thomas on here yeah RTB where are you yeah we need you we need you on our pod <laughs> <laughs> call in <laughs> give us a call Roy give us a call let Blue us lines know are open. yeah um yeah, I wish that there were more of, more of those because I this just fascinates me to hear all the little nuances that you can't pick out when the when all of the instruments are going at the same time. Uh, I love it. I love listening to those. And, and you know what's interesting is that with the with the advent of of you know carrying around our music collections on our phones and mm-hmm. uh, iPods and so forth and and listening to music that we've listened to for years and years and years through headphones, you pick stuff out um, that, that you've never heard before because you've never listened to it that closely or, you, or you've listened, you know, like I have through subpar speakers in a, in a car with the windows down and, you know, things like that. But um, our, our buddy Gruno um, who, who, who does production work, you know, I've listened to, to some things that, that he's done. I'm like, oh, wow, that was really cool how you put, you know, that sound in there or whatever. And, and, and his response is, well, it's always been in there. And it's like, Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I never noticed that before. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's really cool to, to sit and listen to the car's catalog and, you know, with, with the headphones on and just kind of really, really listen and all the things that you can pick out that you, you know, have never, never even noticed before. I totally agree. I totally agree. These remasters that they've come out with are just amazing for that. It's it's kind of like if people listen to our podcast with headphones <laughs> on, and if they listen closely, they can hear me take a <laughs> swig of soda. Yeah. <laughs> they can. Swallow. They can. They can hear me like wiping my nose when I'm sick. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Really- Moving the wheels on my chair around, you know, I'm scooting yes, around, yes. that kind of stuff. They can, they can hear me like doing that, um, the whisper snap at my kids, like, go out, I'm recording. <laughs> I'll make dinner when I'm damn good and ready. That's go to your room. Right. I, I told you to eat before I got on here. Yeah. Go away. Shit, go <laughs> eat some Huckleberry Taffy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. Uh, Huckleberry your ass. Because <laughs> that's how I talk to my kids. <laughs> you huckle. <laughs> Gonna huckleberry your ass, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I brought up the whole bass thing because I did send you that little clip of uh, of Benjamin of mm-hmm. Benjamin on bass, and I'm hoping should we can we it's, try it? It's not. It's it's you know what? It's all spinach. We're not spinach no. like Popeye. It's it's spinning. I'm giving it a go, and it's doing nothing. Okay. So thanks, Blog Talk. Thanks, so annoying. <laughs> thanks, Evans. You know what, Blog Talk? I'm gonna huckleberry your ass. <laughs> that is just so gonna be the new insult. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm gonna huckleberry some Blog Talk ass. <laughs> This is unacceptable of, blog talk. Instead of open up a can of a huckleberry, ass, gonna, yes, that's right. Yeah. Has, has, <laughs> you know what? Then, and this is a fine way for blog talk radio to treat the number one longest running podcast. Right. The cars. We can't hey, even we play have, our damn clips. Yeah, we have clout here, blog talk. We can yeah. do something. I yeah. pretty much Donna. All we need to do, I think, you have no other um, alternative but to hum the bass line that you wanted <laughs> to play. No. Okay. I'm not going to And do that. go. Nope. Not doing it. Um, but I let me try to play it on my thing and see if it'll just be picked up on my mic. Can I try that? Sure. Is that okay? While you're I, doing I that, I'm I'm going to hum the bass line for um, magic. Hmm. 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 <laughs> water. I'm walking no, on water. My, I'll be done. <laughs> Greg's in the canoe paddling by. 
Mm-hmm. 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 guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are, are you ready? Go. Am I ready? Oh, yeah. Um, so let me yeah. just give a little lead in in case it does work. There are, like Magic is a really good example. There's a lot of great songs where and space is really prominent, but I wanted to highlight one that's maybe not quite as out there. Um, it's from my favorite album, Panorama, of course, and it's his bass in Running to You. Oh, I love it. Hey, are you ready? Should we give it a try? Go for it. Okay, hang on just a sec here. Let me see how this can work. Can you still hear me? Huh? Can you hear me? Donna, are you there? You're being serious. Donna, I Maybe think we've serious. lost Donna. David. Come on, Donna. I'm going to huckleberry your ass if you don't get on here. Are you, Dave, are you serious? You can't hear me now? I can totally hear you. I'm just, I'm just. You're screwed a, a brat. <laughs> oh my God. Go on, play it. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me try this and see if it works. Hang on just a second. Yeah, that's not working, Donna. It's not working, Donna. <laughs> no, Donna. <laughs> oh my God! It sounds like aliens are coming down. <laughs> are you talking over my thing, Donna? <laughs> what? Could you not hear it? It is, uh, I don't know what you were playing. <laughs> what? It was, it was weird. I don't know what you were doing on that. It sounded like aliens were trying to communicate with us. <laughs> oh, really? It, it did not resemble anything by the cars. I am Maybe so Gary Newman. Sad. Are you sure? Here. I'm totally here. I'm going to play. I'm playing Running to You off my phone. Can you hear that? Okay, can you fast forward it? Donna, this is a phone. I don't know what that How means. How far do you want to fast know. forward? So about 115. 115. Yeah. 115. 115. Boom. Okay, so let's listen to this bass. Okay, you can I, I see what you mean on that. And I, I've never that, I've never listened that intently, and that's my favorite song off Panorama. I love it. I love the song. He's got the vocals going on. It's amazing. Great lyrics. And that bass. I love that bass. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. You know, this is kind of the equivalent of two um twelve year old girls calling each other on the phone <laughs> saying, I want you to listen to this, this song. The song by Andy Gibb. I'm gonna play it for you now. <laughs> Listen, love, <laughs> love is higher than a mountain. Love is thicker than water. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no, goodness. Well, whatever it sounds like, Listen. I don't care but, because <laughs> hey, we got to do what we got to do because blog talk is against. I can't us. believe it. I can't yeah, believe that's it. Not good. Not I'm good. bummed because I. I even did a fade in, fade out. I was working my Audacity yeah. software, had it going on. Oh, well. Really? Yeah. That's, that's some great bass. Not working? Yeah, that is awesome. Very awesome. Yeah. So that's musically what, one, what Ben brings to the cars. Definitely. And um, I think, well, maybe with the exception of Greg, um, changing hair colors. He did a lot. 
hair color change. He did. No, I think that's. I think that's. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that to be to be funny. But you think <laughs> about it. Candy O, he went with blonde, which totally fits that album. Panorama, he went back dark. Yeah. Which totally fits that album. Yes. Well, don't forget, he has a skunk strike going on. He really did sort of a switcheroo uh, Jedi mind trick there between those first two albums because kind of dark, then he was blonde on Midnight Special, then he was kind of dark again, and then the Candio came out with the blonde picture on the back, and then he showed up on the stage with the dark hair and the skunk stripe. And then, yeah, then he went dark on Panorama. Yeah, he was sort of the Presto Magic hair color guy. Yeah, I, I got the skunk stripe thing going, but unfortunately it's gray. <laughs> <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> Not as cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure it leaves a little something compared to Benjamin. Right. Hey, old, old ladies like it, so, you know. <laughs> All your teacher wives. You know, all my teacher wise like it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So he, yeah, he had the looks. He definitely uh, knew how to work the looks. That's for sure. And uh, Rick, his hair color didn't change, but his the height of the the height the height did the the spikiness. The, well, you, uh, yeah, the spiky. But think about how fashionable Rick Ocasek is. And I mean, and still is. The guy's always dressed to the nines. I mean, you, I don't think you could find a, sh- uh, a picture of Rick in a t-shirt and jeans. I know there's one picture of him in jeans because I've oh, seen it. I never it's not thought like about a t-shirt that and jeans. Think yeah. about Rick. You, you know how we always joke about how Benjamin was the last to know about the photo shoot. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's always doing something that's off or whatever. I mean, you know, Rick was never <laughs> like that. He's always got something that's trendy yeah yeah very classy yeah i agree i agree he had a look but he and you know and he he could pull it off because of his you know his body shape yes yeah it's quite distinctive um here's another little uh tidbit that we've kind of talked about before i i don't think uh that rick was younger than benjamin quite frankly oh, rick i'm just gonna throw that out there than- Rick is not younger than Benjamin. And you no, know what? I, according to Wikipedia, he is. But well, we know in real life. That's, but yeah. in real life, um, I posted long ago, I'll say probably a year, maybe more, um, Rick's yearbook photos. Yes. yes. And, and I can't remember dates because I'm not good with dates or whatever, but – Rick Ocasek, as a freshman in high school, does not coincide with the year that he says he was born. So either he was a prodigy <laughs> or <laughs> when, you know, when the band came out or whatever, you know, he's right. I was born, you know, because they wanted to keep the age down or whatever. I, yeah. I don't fault him for it. No, I just don't, you know, I deal in facts. Yeah, I don't think that's Rick, Rick is not Rick is the oldest, as a matter of fact. Yes. Yes. That's what my understanding is too. So Wikipedia says he was born in nineteen forty nine. We know Benjamin was born in nineteen forty seven. Uh I think that Rick was probably forty seven or earlier. Night born uh, in nineteen forty seven. Forty five maybe. Really? I don't know. That much yeah. that much older I, I think. I was thinking it was a couple years. Interesting. And I and and I get that timeline by what year the yearbook was that I found him in. And I can't remember the year now. And like a dummy, when I screenshotted it, I didn't bother to screenshot the the name of the yearbook or the year or whatever, but it was like, no, you're when gonna I, have found to... it, I was like, Oh, there's proof. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Because, because when Rick said, yeah, I was born in 1949, whenever he, whenever he made that public, to um, the entertainment industry, he never thought that in forty <laughs> some odd years, some some doofus like me could go on ancestry.com, 
search <laughs> um, Baltimore, whatever high school it was, come up with a yearbook and then find Rick Okasik or Rick Richard Otkasik um, yes. in there, you know. <laughs> we'll have to find that again. I need, yeah. that. I need that photographic evidence. Um, but, when, you know, go ahead. I was going to say, when, when, when you're, have you ever been on Ancestry.com? Uh, no, I don't think so. Did yeah. I? I, I don't know if it's just – it, it, there's all kinds of links that will direct you to Ancestry.com, but I, I went through my little genealogy uh, phase and, and plunked the money down monthly to be able to you know have access to everything on the site. But Ancestry.com is one of those things uh, that's like you're, you're at a party at somebody's house and you go in their bathroom and you know looking inside the medicine cabinet, that's kind of the way you feel on Ancestry.com <laughs> when you search for people that aren't in, really in your family. You know, you, you get yeah, that feeling like, yeah. I, I hope no one catches me searching <laughs> for somebody who's not in my family. You know, like, yeah. you're going to get slapped on the hand for it. But <laughs> Yes, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I went I went back so many generations. And then when I started getting messages from from, like, cousins um 20 23 generations once removed or whatever i just got wigged out you know yeah <laughs> I mean, the weird creepy people that are my family <laughs> like, yeah sorry esther i just can't deal with it <laughs> and they want to friend you on facebook and it's like eh, i don't think we're that close i'm sorry <laughs> We have like a great, 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 great grandpa in common. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I think that's interesting. Well, I was going to say about the uh, the yearbook thing, though. There was some odd. We had come across some other odd yearbook stuff, didn't we? I don't know if we were um, talking well, about. Well, I came across the Benjamin stuff that that didn't seem to uh, to to sync up. He just seemed. Um, the the age why age line doesn't didn't add up, but then again, you think in that period of time, kids were younger in school. Um, right. You know, for example, I started kindergarten when I was four, and I didn't yeah, turn right. five until uh, like three months into the school November. year. And they don't yeah. do that anymore. I mean, kids are starting kindergarten um, late five year five year old and sometimes already six. Right. And, um, you know, for whatever reason they started that, I, I think as, as society has gone down, <laughs> down <you> know, <laughs> they, they go, I think we need to up the age on kindergarten because we're not, you know, <laughs> finding the same kind of uh, uh, basic skills, you know, so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I have to revisit that yearbook stuff about Benjamin. Which um, reminds but, me, you know, I, I was going to say yeah, this so earlier. And and I'm, I'm I'll say it now. This is my 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 plug as okay. as a teacher and as a grandparent. Um, you know this this weekend I have grand grandbaby number two with us. Yeah. She is I don't know how many I'm not good with the months thing. She's going to be two <laughs> in February, so you, you know you figure out the months. But yeah. um, a tool that I used as a teacher. Uh, teaching uh, children with with disabilities, uh, cognitive disabilities, and in in helping raise my granddaughters is our uh, a set of videos, and they're put out by Preschool Prep, and they're called like they have like meet the letters, meet the letter sounds, meet the colors, meet the numbers, and these videos drive adults insane. Okay. I, I don't know, I don't know how popular they are. I just know that I knew about them in school when I had the granddaughters. I started playing, you know, these things for them. And you can start playing these for them when they're like nine months old. Okay. And okay. they're 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 very irritating because like for Meet the Letters. I was playing Meet the Letters tonight for for, for granddaughter number two. And it, they'll come on the screen, the letter A, and the person will go, A. A, 
Hey, <laughs> how many different ways can you say a, 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 and, and then it goes through and then like, it'll turn into a little character and do something. And then they'll keep saying a, and then it goes to capital a, and it does the same thing again, all throughout the alphabet. Well, you know, this child, you know, I did this with my first granddaughter and, you know, s- saw amazing results. And this is the first time granddaughter number two has ever watched these. And we're sitting there, my wife and I, and we, all of a sudden, she looks at us and she goes, C. We're like, yeah, that's the letter C. And we get up to D and D starts coming out. And after all, she looks at us and says, D, yeah, D. And we're like hooping and hollering, D. But, you know, here, here's a kid that's not even two years old. And, you know, they can, they can learn these things. They can, you know, get themselves um, to where they, they have a good chance of being successful in school. Yeah. And I, I only bring this up because, you know, as a teacher in an in, in urban environment, I see so many five- and six-year-olds that at the, the time my number one granddaughter was two, maybe three, could run circles around these kids. And that's because not yeah. because she's a genius. It's because she's being exposed to things. And that's what, yeah. you know, people need to do with their children. Don't sit, you know, don't sit them down in front of a TV to watch some kind of mindless drivel. You know, it's this kind of stuff that you expose them to. And then you realize that that's such a uh, opportune time to learn is that between, you know, a year old and, and, five years old to learn those mm-hmm. things. You know, oh, yeah. It, it was, soak it, it up. Was, and what, I mean, if you think back to when we were kids, it was second nature to know the alphabet when you went into the kindergarten and colors and how to write your name and things like that. And it's not that way anymore. So, yeah. So there's yeah. my stepping, stepping off my soapbox. So you I know that out there with kids or grandkids read to them, expose them <laughs> to, to all those things. Um, you know, YouTube videos about, um, you know, spiders is not it. <laughs> letting letting <laughs> well, them watch your springer is not it. <laughs> Get down on the floor yeah. with them. You know, those kind of things. All right. So off my soapbox. All right. Well, and you know, I agree with you on all of that. We've talked about that a little bit before. I have homeschooled my kids and a um, huge proponent of reading. And I've read to them all since birth, since I would lay them facing out, I would lay down on the couch, lay them facing out on my chest and hold books over there, over them where they could track them visually. And I would read to them yeah. um, or just talk to them about what was on the page from their infancy. I am a huge proponent of reading and um, interacting with your kids that way. I totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. And say, Nick, get over here before I huckleberry your ass. We're going to read tonight. <laughs> oh, well, it wasn't quite like that. I tried to make it a little more positive experience. <laughs> well, he was young, so it's like, Nick, get over here before I huckleberry your little butt. No, 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 no. My kids love to read. They, they're they all good readers. Lizzie, um has dyslexia so she has different we go about it a different way with her and she's actually more she loves audiobooks that would be another thing i just push all the time is yeah. audiobooks um if you can't read to your kids get an audiobook <laughs> let somebody read to them um yeah and i and i'm not talking about like silly just like stories necessarily but we're actually reading literature reading good word structure, reading vocabulary to the kids and getting that in their brains is huge. I um, I know. Okay. I'm not going to, I could go on and on about it forever too, but yeah, oh, reading. And all of a sudden, Very good. We are the literature corner podcast. <laughs> well, we can, we host, can bring it back around. <laughs> Professor bring it back Dave around because, uh, and Professor Rick Donna. Was, yes. Rick was quite a writer, is quite a writer, I think. And, um, so, yes, that's how we'll bring it back around. If you want your kids to read the lyrics to the car song, read now. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> lyrics and prose. Speaking of, of Rick's kids, I mean, there's a difference within our, our, our Ocasek and, uh, and Orr. You know, Benjamin has a son. Um, you know, I don't know how musically inclined he is, although I, I have heard some of his um, dubstep <laughs> stuff that, that uh, he put on somewhere. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was. It was wow. <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, Rick has um, Christopher, um, who was in Glamour Camp, and but then okay. his his sons, Jonathan and Oliver. Um, I don't okay. know if you ever had a chance to listen, to it, but they they put out um, not from SoundCloud, one of those places where you can post your music or whatever and and get yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and uh, it is um, you know classical music, little jazzy, whatever. I, I love it. It's it's brilliant. Um, nice. Very 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 cool to listen to, like on a walk, on a bike ride, those kinds of things. But. Um, you know, so that's, it's, you make, it makes you wonder how much Rick exposed them to music. Um, yeah. As children. I, I would assume a lot. You know, he has six sons. Do you know that? Really? Yes. He has two so sons. What are the other two I'm missing? Or other each four of three. I'm missing? Three I'm missing. I'm missing. Uh, I don't know all that. Well, there's Adam. There's an Adam. Adam is the one in Glamour Camp, right? Uh, I, I can't remember which one. One of them is like does a photography and um, mm-hmm. really cool art, and um, I can't. But I don't, I don't remember which one is which. Um, but there's Adam, I Patrick, Richard, uh, not Richard, um, Christopher, and then the two with Paulina, and then I I don't know if I know the other two. Uh, gosh, I would have to think on it, but. Um, he has two sons from each of three different marriages, from what I understand. Yeah, so yeah, Aaron, Christopher, Aaron and Derek. Aaron, that's right, that's right. Derek, I wouldn't have remembered, but Aaron, I knew. Um, that's Christopher funny. was the singer who formed Glamour Camp. That was Christopher. Yes. Um, which I have listened to a little bit of that. So, yeah, anyway. That's, I guess, neither here nor there. That's out there. Six boys. All right. So, Donna, here, here, yep. here's what I want I want you to do. Okay. I want, and we're, we're just about down to the end of our podcast. Okay. Um, I want you to, to tell the story again of the first time that you saw the cars. <laughs> Why? Because. Okay, you want me to be honest? Yeah. I'll be honest. I've got to go to the bathroom really, oh. really bad. And we don't have any music to play. Thanks, Blog Talk. Thanks, Blog and Talk. And if you don't talk, um, then I think our listeners are, are going to hear me have an accident. <laughs> Well, you have to go really fast then because... Yeah, I will. Otherwise, Okay, well, I won't talk about the first... So go, just go now. Go, here we go. Go. Okay, so I won't talk about the first time I saw Ben because... Or the band, because I have already talked about that. But um, I do want to say that, uh, like a lot of people, when I first got into the cars and got into researching them and learning more about them... Um, of course, I was on Team Benjamin, so I was obsessed with everything Benjamin. And I did start out with this. Um, I started developing this theory, idea, catching this fever that somehow Rick was the bad guy and Benjamin was the good guy, and that Rick was evil and that Benjamin, you know, was the hero. And um, you know, you. Like I said, with the videos, you start looking at, well, well, Rick's always out in front, and Rick this and Rick that. Rick didn't like the score, so the scores were limited. Rick didn't like to push merchandising, so merchandising was limited. And you just develop this whole um, idea and this perspective that, you know, I realize now is pretty skewed in some ways. I mean, I'm sure that Rick had his faults, and um, but I'm sure that Benjamin also had his faults, and the five guys together in the band working together, I'm sure that they all contributed to the pluses and minuses. <laughs> uh, so now I have a more balanced perspective where I'm sure that Rick was not always the bad guy. I could totally hear your footsteps coming across the floor. <laughs> it was like the old radio programs, you know, where they're banging the shoe on the piece of wood, walking across the floor. 
Oh, Donna, you saved my life. <laughs> Your voice doesn't sound quite as I high was, pitched as it did. Right I, was, I was in tears. <laughs> oh my gosh. And as embarrassing as it is to have to leave the podcast to go to the bathroom, you know, man, it's just it's just part of getting old. That's well, there you say. have it. <laughs> and, have you ever seen Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid? <laughs> oh, maybe I don't. I might have seen it once. I've heard of it. This, you know, it's a Steve Martin flick, and there's mm-hmm. a scene where he's pouring coffee into the coffee <laughs> pot. And he's pouring and pouring and pouring. And you think it's done and like a little bit more comes out of the package. Then he stops and then more comes out and he goes <laughs> on a little farther and you think it's all done. And he does goes to this whole thing of making the bag go up and down and you think it's done. Nope. And then more comes out. <laughs> That's what I was like in the bathroom. I'm thinking, I need to get back for Donna. I need to Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh shit, I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> It's like uh, the, what that reminds me of is Naked Gun. Have you did you see that movie with Jason <coughs> Nielsen? Yeah. Yeah. And he's, 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 everybody can hear it out in the auditorium. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Queen's yeah. out there, I think, yeah. and who knows? <laughs> but, yeah. The the funny thing is, is that um, I I work with a student at school who has um, I gotta get think of the technical name for it and an FM. Um, God, I can't think of the technical name, but basically what it is, it's, it's an FM system and she okay. has hearing aids in it's, it's not for, because she has a hearing impairment. It's because she has a, a attention problems. So she has okay. like hearing aids in and then um, we, they call it a Roger pen and it's, okay. it looks like a pen you wear it around your neck. And so your voice gets fed directly into her ears you know, and helps her pay attention. And okay. I don't know how many times I've, forgot to mute it and gone over and <laughs> yeah. talked to another teacher. And yes, I have like a couple of times gone into the bathroom. Oh, David, no. <laughs> and I think that poor kid. And I'll go back and say, um, sorry about that. <laughs> She's sitting there blushing, I'm sure. And just like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes I screw with her. Sometimes like I'll go into the classroom next door and I'll say, um, I'll, I'll call her Sally. I'll say, Hey, you know, so and so teacher, blah blah. Um, Sa- I wonder if Sally's listening in right now. And then I'll go <laughs> back into the classroom. She's in. She'll have this little grin on her face. You know? <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, uh, you got to remember those things. Yes. Well, I was just uh, going on about how I started out uh, researching the cars and developing this um, feeling or this idea that Rick was the bad guy and that Benjamin was the good guy. And that I have since then, you know, gotten a more balanced perspective that I'm sure that Rick and Benjamin both contributed to whatever conflicts that they had and that yeah. they both had, you know, I'm sure they both had their faults and they both had their strengths. And Yeah. And, you know, I don't know who, I can't remember who it is. And even if I could remember who it was, I wouldn't say their name on the pod, but there, there's some dude out there in Facebook land who, and he's done it a couple of times where he'll have like list a car song and they'll say written by Rick Ocasek and Benjamin Orr or written uh. by Benjamin Orr or whatever. And it's like, dude, Benjamin did not write that song. No. And then he goes off, goes on the tangent of, well, musically, blah, 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 and, blah, 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 and this and that and the other thing. It's like, dude, it's not the same. <laughs> right. I see what you're right. saying, but you can't say, you know, moving in stereo by Rick Ocasek, Greg Cox, and Benjamin Orr. You can't just right. plug it in there. I mean, that's yeah. the music bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's a whole other topic, too, as far as, and I think we maybe have touched on it, that I'm sure there was a lot of collaborating going on in the creation of those songs, but the way it shook out legally is Rick's the writer. Greg has a couple of uh, writing credits, uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, yeah. whatever it looks and, like and behind by, the scenes, we don't know. <clears throat> by the way, the reason you could hear my footsteps coming back in from my uh, my break is because yes. blog talk is running so slow that w- I muted before I left. And just now, it kicked over into mute on me. Oh, 
just now. We have got to find another way to do this. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, Which Donna, we're, we're, we're at the point where we need to, uh, to wrap it up. Yep, yep. And uh, do the midnight scroll. Okay. Um, we don't have midnight scroll music. Um, can, talk. Can, you, can, can you hum can it? Can I hum it? Um. <laughs> 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 like a keyboard part. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero musical talent at all. Do it no, again, would you? <laughs> no, I will not. I'm sure you can play. Come on. No. How many? Well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so we're just going to Midnight Scroll. All right. Okay. We, once again, we do not have an email from our faithful listeners. I'm so sad. But I do have a tweet I'd like to read. Okay. And and I will retweet or post this tweet tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow. Okay. But this tweet is from a Donald J. Trump. What? Yeah, hey. Donald J. Trump. Hey, I'm not I'm not shitting you. It says Night Thoughts is fake podcasting. Believe me, worst podcast ever. It went downhill when the cars dropped Gary Newman. Sad. <laughs> Stop. That's a boner. People, people, do you hear what you are making, Dave, what you're making me have to put up with? I have to try to courtesy laugh at this. Ha, ha, ha. That's so funny. Little Believe Trump. Me. Wow. People, Believe please. Me. Please write into the fabulous. podcast. Oh. I have a podcast. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> Top of the ratings. Night spots, just sad. Please, Losers. people, please write into us. Tell us your thoughts <laughs> about Ben and Rick. Tell us your thoughts about evil. anything. The loser. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, a, I'm posting that tweet, man. I'll post it tomorrow. Oh, people can see for goodness. themselves. Donald J. Trump listens. President Trump listens to us. Oh, well. And he thinks yes. we're fake. Well, here's some feedback that I will tell you. I I don't have anything specifically to read. I've just heard heard some people, some friends that have just chatted with me a little bit um, about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame episode that we did last time. Uh, in case if there's any misunderstanding, we definitely promote the vote. Vote for the cars for sure. We. We talked about different things on that. It wasn't just a cheerleading yeah. routine to get you to vote. We, we kind of did the ins no. and outs. I, so we are the, for the cars. Vote. <laughs> you know my stand on that, though. It doesn't matter. Oh, I know the cars are going to make it into the top five regardless. But it's, it's and, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? A popularity contest, that fan vote. Yes, so, it yeah, absolutely I put is. it out there. I think it's a, a cool thing to vote and and do whatever, but you know, we just want people to realize that's not the vote vote. The people who are right. posting pictures of their ballots, now those are yeah. the people you want yes. to tweet. Yeah, which yes, I saw two today uh, do there. One of the was the guy from the Kinks and uh, the uh, other guy that I tweeted, Schechter. Is that his last name? Uh, are yeah, they voting so- for the cars? Well, the Jonathan, what was that his name? Jonathan Schechter, I think. Yeah, he said he was definitely voting for the cars. That's the one I retweeted that said that we had a um, a vote for, an official vote for the cars. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that one, but um, uh, yeah, Schechter, Jonathan Schechter. Without a doubt, he said he's awesome. voting for the cars. I bet anyway, you Eddie I Trump will clarify. vote for the cars again, too. Who? Eddie I Trunk. Think- Oh, yes, I hope so. Yes, I'll be watching for that. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that, yes, we weren't, you know, it's not, we're not down on the vote, the voting in general. Go for it. But people getting so furious about it and things like that, it's not necessary. Let's vote for the band. We love them. We think they're the best. Yes, we promote the vote for sure. So I just wanted to clarify that. Right. Uh, the other thing I wanted to clarify that I heard from somebody uh, is that um, – 
we are not going to discuss the sexual preferences of any members of the band on this podcast. So uh, don't ask me again. Holy shit. (laughs) Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Why don't I get those kinds? You know, there's sometimes... I'm really envious, Donna, that people, you know, feel like they can approach you and they don't, you know, they don't want to approach Mr. <laughs> Steel World. But you know what? Why don't people ask me questions like that? Because <laughs> I would, Cause they yeah. know what they're, they know what they're going to get back from you. They're not going to, you know, I give my little, well, that's just not anything we talk about on our podcast. Did you? Yeah, I, you know what? I would have told them I'm going to huckleberry your ass. You asked me that. Oh, well, question. that's why they don't write to you. That's why they write to me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, which I'm not, I'm not offended. I'm not offended the question. I understand that it's a topic of conversation in some circles. Just wanting to clarify for the record, you will not hear those kinds of discussions on the Night Thoughts podcast. We yeah. are, after all, the number one podcast. We keep it classy. Hey, we didn't, <laughs> for the most we didn't get to be the longest running number one podcast for the cars talking about sexual preferences. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You got it. Oh, did we? <laughs> oh, yeah, because we're the only. That's right. Because we're the only, yeah. <laughs> so, Donna, where can people find you? Tell us. Ooh, come find me on Twitter at Sweet Purple June. Find me on Facebook. Uh, I have a Benjamin Orr page called Benjamin Orr Sweet Purple June. And I also have a blog about Benjamin and the cars. You can find that at sweetpurplejune.wordpress.com. Hey. How about you? And. You can find both Donna and I on uh, the Fanorama Facebook page. Um, yes. You can find me on uh, Twitter at night underscore spots. <clears throat> and I'm going to be starting up a new page on Facebook called the sexual preferences of the stars. <laughs> That's going to be a closed group. Maybe I'll make it an open group. I don't know. But uh, yeah, you'll soon be able to find me on that. So, hey, I want to let everybody know, too, we did start a YouTube channel um, with all of our podcast episodes on there. So if you have problems listening to the show through Blog Talk, you can find us, search for Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast. You'll be able to find our channel. All right. Awesome. And uh, lastly, we want to um, thank Blog Talk for their <laughs> wonderful response time on our sound um, clips. And um, so we want to send out a nice little fuck you to blog talk. (laughs) And since we can't um, end our podcast with our, with our usual um, outro music, I'm going to play a little um, zippity doo da by Mr. Rick Okasik. So um, thanks everyone for listening. That's it for night thoughts this week. And we are out. See you later. makes me wonder this song was from Mad About the Mouse Rick you know did a cut on it with a lot of other stars and I kind of wonder what Mickey Mouse's sexual preference is I don't know it's neither here nor there Although I am inclined to think that Mickey Mouse did prefer mice. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe Mickey had a, like a drunk night one night and went over with a rat once. I don't know.